Greetings in the name of our Lord as we uh, gather in His name and around His Word as we worship together this morning. Welcome to Good Shepherd. God's blessings be upon you. And uh, we also pray for those of you that are visiting today. God's blessings be upon you. Thank you for being uh, here in our congregation. Uh, please sign our guest book and we do invite you to worship with us again. Our service today will be the service of prayer and preaching on page 260. Obviously, we're in the uh, season of Lent, so we'll be doing the Lent responses, and uh, then we do omit the uh, New Testament canticle on this service because of Lent as well. The opening hymn is Lamb of God, Pure and Holy. It's hymn 434. We will stand on the last verse.
the Old Testament reading for this the fifth Sunday in Lent is recorded in Ezekiel 37, verses 1 through 14, and is printed out for us on the back of the worship folder. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones, and he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Count from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land, then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is going to be our sermon text for this morning. It's in Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 1 to 11. And we will read it together on the back of your worship folder. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of our righteousness. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Will you please rise for the Holy Gospel? This morning's Gospel lesson is in St. John, the 11th chapter, 17 to 27 and 38 to 53. Our epistle lesson, which we just read, was also our sermon text. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. Many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever, everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he had been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, had come with Mary and had seen what he did and believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, What are we to do? For this man performs many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all. Nor do you understand that it is better for you that one man should die for the people, not that the whole nation should perish. He did not say this of his own accord, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but also to gather into one the children of God who are scattered abroad. So from that day on, they made plans to put him to death. This is the word of the Lord. We continue now with the responsory on page 263. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered from sin to the evil. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered from sin to the evil. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He was delivered unto death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. We continue with the Catechism part of our service. We will say the Ten Commandments together at the top of page 264. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or maidservant, his ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. We confess together, I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
Jesus died so we might live. Amen. Text again will be our epistle, Romans 8, 1 through 11. Dear friends of Christ, there was a Dutch family who got into trouble with the Nazis during World War II. They had been hiding Jews from the Nazis when their crime was discovered. The Nazis came one night, arrested them at gunpoint. The family was placed in a cattle car of a train to be taken to one of the death camps. They rode all night, spent the time fearful of what lay ahead. Finally, as daylight was breaking, the train stopped. The door of the cattle car was opened and they were told to get out. Fearing the worst, they looked around. And they saw they were not at a death camp. In fact, they weren't even in Germany, they were in Switzerland. During the night, some courageous, daring person had tripped a switch and sent that train to Switzerland and freedom. And instead of being sent to certain death, they were welcomed to new life. That is the message we have today. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Jesus Christ from the law of sin and death. The Holy Spirit has set us free to live a new life of living for the Lord in this world. And looking forward to heaven itself set free to live. Now we know to be set free something must be entangling us. We all know this well, don't we? That, of course, is our flesh. When our mind is on pleasing the flesh, it is hostile to God, and we cannot please Him. It means we're living self-centered lives. We think of only what's going to benefit me. Do you ever have those times where you need to be somewhere to exhibit fruits of the Spirit? such as love, or joy, or patience, and you just don't want to go? In the flesh, you're not feeling very joyful, or loving, or patient. But somehow you rouse yourself to go, and the Lord ends up providing a wonderful experience, and you walk away and you wonder, what just happened? That's the work of God, the Holy Spirit, my friend. We know that life in the flesh can be a spiritual challenge. It can lead us down roads we never thought we'd go, to places we never thought we would be, in the company of people we never thought we'd be hanging around. It's like the elderly man who is stopped by the police around 2 a.m. and he's asked where he's going at that time of night. And the man replies, I'm on my way to a lecture about alcohol abuse and smoking and staying out late and the effects that can have on the human body. And the officer looks at him and goes, really? I mean, who in the world is giving that lecture at this time of night? And the man replies, that would be my wife. In the flesh, we are living contrary to living in the Spirit. But God, the Son in the flesh, sets us free to live in the Spirit. Jesus came as a flesh and blood human being in the flesh for us flesh and blood human beings. Jesus, as we know, is fully human and fully God. Life is to be lived in the flesh. And as a real flesh and blood human being, Jesus then lived, died, rose for us. He kept God's law perfectly. He never, ever gave in to the flesh, which saved us from times when we have. He atoned for our sins, overcame death on our behalf. And through our holy baptism, the Holy Spirit lives in us. And as he lives in us, we have been set free to live as God's children. The human flesh and blood Jesus is really with us in the physical world, though invisibly. Every time his word is read or preached, 
The flesh and blood Jesus is also in the physical world, in baptism by water, in the Lord's Supper, in and under the bread and wine, which are his true flesh and blood. And you see, when we have the Spirit of Christ living on us, we want to live for others and not just for ourselves. We are concerned then about their human needs in the flesh, as well as their spiritual needs. We go to that place we didn't want to go that I talked about earlier in the sermon. And the Lord blesses. Oh, how the Lord blesses. And we are no longer slaves to being in the wrong place at the wrong time around the wrong people. The Spirit has set us free to be in the presence of Christ. And you see, we have that now as we worship together. But we'll more joyfully have it in eternity. These flesh and blood bones we march around with will eventually die. No matter how many times we take it into the shop for repair, the time will come when somebody will want to know the official time it stopped. Except that body is going to rise again when Christ returns. Yes, we live in the flesh and we will live in the flesh in heaven. Just never again in the sinful flesh that so troubles us here. So we have been set free by Christ to live lives in the Spirit. Amen. Will you please rise for our prayer? I will be doing the prayers here from the altar. We will not do the prayer that's in the service because I have some uh, different prayer requests I need to incorporate. So let us please pray. Lord of life, speak hope and life to the dry bones of your people. You alone can raise up from sin's body of death. Renew what you have begun in us by the living waters of our baptism. Lead us by the voice of your word and continue to nourish us in Holy Communion. Lord of life, breathe in us your Holy Spirit, that we may respond to your word and sacraments with faith and walk in the way of Christ all the days of our lives. Lord of life, extend your blessing in the mission fields and partner churches who work with us for the sake of your kingdom throughout the world. Bless the work of the missionary and church planner here and everywhere. Lord of life, bless all husbands and wives, parents and children. Make their homes places of blessing, faith, and love. Lead them in the pursuit of that which is good, right, true, and honorable, that in word and deed your name may be glorified. Lord of life, comfort all who suffer illness, pain, and want. Give to them healing, strength, relief, and peace according to your good and gracious will. We pray especially this morning for Stephanie Shemp following her surgery this past week as she now recovers from at home. We thank you that they were able to catch what was troubling Stephanie and take it out of her body. And we just ask now that your healing hand be upon her. We pray for Dave McElhaney who has been diagnosed with some blockages in his heart and he awaits triple bypass later this week, helping to rest comfortably until he has his surgery. And then we ask that you would be with the doctor and nurses, that they might use the abilities you have given them so that the surgery would have the desired effect. We also pray for Vernon, the brother of Audrey Groner, who has suffered a stroke. We ask that you would watch over him, that be your will, that you would heal him, be with Don and Audrey as they travel out to the east to see him and bring them back safely. And then, Lord, we give you our thanks for saving Gordon McQuown, who died this past week, whose Christian funeral and burial were yesterday. We thank you that you brought Gordon into the faith, kept him in the faith throughout his lifetime, and he is now enjoying an eternity with you. We pray all of this in the name of Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
The collect of the day is printed in your worship folder, Almighty God. By your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people, that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join together in praying the morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you, for into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things, let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. We conclude with the blessing on page 267. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. How about that Justin McNeely? That was his first time acolyting, and he actually remembered to take the last flame there. I just taught him like a few weeks ago. I love to see that, don't you? I mean, just, uh, wow, God really blessed us, so he did a great job. And uh, a couple of things, uh, continue to read your uh, bulletin. We've got uh, a lot of announcements. This is kind of the busy week where we have the International House Dinner. Again, if you want to be part of that, we'd love to have you be a part of it. Uh, I was there last night, and uh, they've been serving about 30, 35 kids, uh, so we'll be doing that. We'll be meeting at uh, Wittenberg, uh, kind of getting our stuff together, so if you're coming over, uh, I'll probably be there between 5 and 6 over at Wittenberg, and then we go over at 6.30. Uh, the Walk for Life's next Saturday as well, keep that in mind, and uh, then the benefit for the young man you've been reading about. 
The one thing I want to point out that was new is uh, I have a pastor's conference Tuesday up in Shinoa, and there's going to be a representative from Thrivent there about 11 o'clock. Um, if you would like to come up and hear them talk, because the, the controversy has been uh, swirling around the company, uh, there will be a district representative there. So I'm leaving from Wittenberg's parking lot about 8 o'clock. I'm picking up Pastor Jensen. If you'd like to go up uh, ride with me, just talk to me. Or you can drive up yourself if you have an interest in coming up. So that'll be 11 o'clock on Tuesday. Thanks. Good morning. As Pastor mentioned, please look through the uh, uh, bulletin announcements for the usual uh, scheduling and uh, announcements. I would like to bring one to your attention that concerns Easter lilies. There is a sign up in the narthex on the table there if you're interested in purchasing one of those for Easter Sunday. They are $8 a piece and you may pick them up after the late service on Easter. You can contact Jackie Quasney if you have any questions and her phone number is in the uh, bulletin. Does anyone else have any announcements to make this morning? If not, have a very blessed week.